You're listening to a Roddenberry Podcast. Hey everybody, here we are again, wrapping up the week with Mission Log Engage, the show where we engage with each other and engage with you and your words, your very thoughtful words about what we say on Mission Log. So, uh, oh, by the way, I'm John Champion. And I'm Norman Lau, and uh, we're going into the Wayback Machine. We can use that phrase. I think well, we can. look, mm -hmm. it, it bears repeating every time that I say for real that we keep everything. I think that that's the legacy of Gene Roddenberry. Gene kept everything, and it's all in the archive <laughs> in the other room here, he, but mm -hmm. it's all on paper. For me, I keep all the digital stuff, like every email, every comment, everything, even the ones that are tearing Mission Log apart. That's fine. We hang on to it all. So we can come back to it and respond to it. If you printed out every single email that you saved, how tall would that stack of paper be? Ooh, it uh, wow. It would be as tall as the building that I'm in. There you go. It, it's a lot. It is a lot. Yeah. So. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So today, Wayback Machine, an email from 2018, but still mm -hmm. very relevant. So Norman, if you would like to share that with us. This is an email that comes from Trish. Trish says, Hi, I've been wondering something about the holo suites on DS9. While on TNG, the holodecks were used for general purpose entertainment, they've become almost entirely sexualized, it seems, on DS9 in the form of holo suites. Though Cisco has installed a baseball program for Jake, every other reference to them so far seems to involve sexual pleasure. Jumping ahead a bit, Cisco even tells Jake that in the first episode of season two, that he's not old enough to take a girl to the holo suites. What's up with that? Just wondering if you've noticed that shift and if you know anything about why the writers took that route with a technology that was such a staple of crew entertainment on TNG. Also a nitpicky point, why does Quark own them? If so, does Jake have to pay to use them or Cisco with what? Love the show. Thanks. Thank you, Trish. That's awesome, Trish. Yeah. Um, it's funny, you know, right off the bat, I'll just say I pretty much agree with everything that you're pointing out here. And of course, the idea of ownership. Well, you know, we're not in Federation territory. We're on a space station that was Cardassian and now is in this sort of weird no man's land operated by somebody from Starfleet. But yeah, uh, so payment is always going to be a question. And we've talked about money before on Engage. I know, what does it take, like quarters? You know, like, you, yeah, know, right. you, you know, tokens? Pop, yeah, <laughs> just yeah. put them in the like, slot, go inside? Yeah, it's like that little thing <laughs> where, uh, it, you know, when you pray to the the great exchequer and you put a little oh, yeah. slip of latinum. Right. <laughs> that's, you know, that's yeah. what it it's is. It's like a Dave and Buster's card. You know, like, you know a Quark and Rom's <laughs> card. You just stick yeah. it in the slot. <laughs> Work at Rob's car. <laughs> oh, God, that's awesome. Yeah. We should make those. Exactly. Um, so, I, but yeah, the, the tonal shift over to uh, DS9 from TNG is, is apparent everywhere. You know, the bar is dingier and grittier than 10 Ford. And of course, the, the plot lines, the characters, everything is different. But what I appreciate is the idea that okay, you have this, some might say sanitized version of the future on the Enterprise and definitely on Mission Log and TNG. I would make fun of that kind of thing. Like they wouldn't know a, a hot party if it, you know, bit them in the butt. <laughs> so yeah, and it is Riker sitting there watching the 3D, you know, loot player. And you go like, really? Is that entertainment? And the thing is, it was left to your imagination. Yes, people in the crew are having sex. They have fantasy lives. They have personal lives that we don't see on screen. So you can infer from any of that what you will. On DS9, we're being a little more explicit about the purpose or the interest of these characters, even if we don't see it all on screen. There's a couple of memes going around that I can't read here, <laughs> but they're very funny. They're, it's like the descriptive difference between TNG and DS9 and basically just points out, yeah, on DS9, here's what happens. The space station's on fire. You're going to get, uh, you know, uh, uh, dragged into a smuggling operation. And guess what the holo suites are for? Yeah, that, that's what they're for. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure that when 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 Quark was operating his bar when it was Terok Nor, those were basically hollow brothels, you know, for yeah. the Cardassians, because yeah. the Cardassians were highly 
over sexualized creatures you know yeah. we we know that from their their character development and the way that they've been portrayed on deep space nine but i'm gonna have to say that i i don't really see them being as sexualized used used as you know i don't know maybe i don't i haven't seen every single version of every single you know example of the hollow suite but you know Riker and minuet in that one episode that was very sexual you know oh, I mean, sure. he basically sure. turned his wish into fantasy and then when it got reprogrammed she became something different but he fell in love with her in that oh yeah yeah, um, yeah, yeah. in in deep space nine i mean miles and and o'brien i mean miles and bashir they're they're doing guy stuff they're doing like the battle of the alamo or you mm -hmm. know flying the battle of britain Quar you know wharf is doing like klingon historical stuff well know, and those like are the things that we see no true but true. but there are all those references in ds9 where it is like you know oh you know what's going on in the hollow suite and you don't go up there and it, it, it it's very much inferred that the rest of the time that's what they're being used for but i i get it, it, it it's like you know, it's basically like the equivalent of, um, well, I'm really dating myself here, but the equivalent of like going into the video rental store and there's oh, everything. Oh, the adult section. And there's also the back room. <laughs> <laughs> right. you, know? you never want to be caught in the adult section. Right, right, right. right. But it's there and right. it turns a profit for the owner. Uh -huh. So somebody's using it. You well, know. I mean, there were also like I, I made they use Riker maybe too many times. It's kind of like a whipping post to this joke. But, you know, sometimes where he was frustrated and needed to work off some steam, you know, he'd mm -hmm. hit his communicator and say, like, I'll be in the holodeck. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, what yeah. do you think he's doing? Like the, yeah. the inference of the innuendo was still there, too. I'm not saying that it's not on Deep Space Nine, but it was also there in the next generation. Oh, sure. 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 Yeah. You know? I, I just feel like a lot of that very uh squeaky clean polished field of uh, feel of tng is definitely not what we're getting on ds9 so ds9 it, it feels confident to just sort of admit it and who oh, knows yeah. it's one of those things it's like okay had this been a show that gene roddenberry had actually kind of developed would you get that or not you know we were having a discussion with our uh patreon followers in our, our discord saying well here was a show meant for general viewing in prime time when it came out in the 60s, but Gene was interested in exploring all aspects of the human condition, and especially later, sexuality became something that got explored more. Maybe not on screen, but look at novelizations like the motion picture. So mm -hmm. it's there, it's just not always there. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, the implication is definitely there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. Trish, I, I love that email. What a, what a, a fun way to talk about this. And, and look, certainly won't be the end of any type of discussion about uh, sexual recreation on Star Trek. Or money. Or money. Right. Yeah. Certainly I still that. want them to stick in there. Like this is their hundred, the hundred buck pass. Just click. Yeah. You know how much yeah. does a how much does twenty minutes in a hollow suite cost? Or or <laughs> it, depending on the program, like right, is yeah. one program worth more than another? You know, uh, clearly uh, Bashir's got his own hookup with Felix. So how much? Did, how much does Vic's program cost? I know. Right. You know, yeah, an evening at Vic's. So like, what is that? Like a strip of latinum or something? I mean, that's got to be expensive. And what if, yeah, what if everybody is going to visit Vix? Do they all have to pay? Oh, exactly. So many questions. Look what you did, Trish. Thanks, Trish. <laughs> Thanks. All the way from 2018. Thanks for that. <laughs> all right. So to engage with us, please send us your comments at missionlog at roddenberry.com or on Facebook and Twitter at missionlogpod. Then make sure you go find this playlist, which is on youtube.com slash roddenberryprod under missionlog engage. And remember, we may engage with your comments on the air.